everyone, it's Christopher, aka The Tattooed Quilter, and I'm so thrilled to be here at Fat Quarter Shop to show you how to machine quilt using your domestic sewing machine. All right, so the supplies you're gonna need for this are a ruler, your project, some masking tape, and I'm using one inch masking tape, thread, this is Arafil 50 weight, 2021 is the color, just white thread. Use thread that matches your project. You're also gonna need your walking foot or depending on your machine, a dual feed walking foot. Totally up to you or whatever your machine has. You're also gonna need a mat and because we're gonna be using spray based, I'm using a mat that I've used before for spray based. And remember, when you use spray based, you wanna make sure you do it in a ventilated area with the windows open. So when I'm machine quilting on my domestic machine, you're gonna, you have to make your quilt sandwich, right? So what I like to do is I like to make my quilt backing and my batting the same size. And generally I'm anywhere from an inch to two inches bigger. And that's because I mostly make small projects. The bigger project, you might wanna give yourself a little bit more room. But again, I like my batting and my backing to be the same size. So you're gonna put your, your, your backing down first and you're gonna take your masking tape and we're just gonna, we're just gonna take our masking tape to hold down our backing because we want it to be nice and smooth when we go to use our spray base. And you could, you, you could base the traditional method too. Um, either one works. I just like spray base because it's quicker. It's kind of the lazy method. So we have our top up there. Now we're gonna do our bottom and I just gently pull a little bit so that everything's nice and smooth and flat. Obviously, if you have a larger quilt, you need a larger surface. You might have to do it on the floor. And then repeat for these sides. I love this pink on pink. Pink is one of my favorite colors besides blue. Okay. And then over here, same, you just wanna place it a little bit down on the top and then give it a little pull so that everything lays nice and flat and, and tight. That will help so that the back doesn't come out wrinkled. Okay, so now that you have your backing taped down to your board, you're gonna use your spray base. You wanna read the directions on your spray base, make sure everything's ventilated. And um, what I like to do is, um, I like to take my backing and my batting and lay it together. The instructions I think say something opposite, but this always works well for me. But follow the instructions, or follow me, whatever you wanna do. And I fold it in half. And then I like to spray my backing. I'm at my batting. And then press it down. And then repeat the process. So you have your backing and your batting attached and they're the same size and I like that because um, the backing and the batting being the same size, it helps me when I go to quilt and you'll see that in a second. So now we need to add our quilt top and I repeat the same thing. I just fold back my quilt top in half, give it a good amount of spray. and then roll it back and smooth it out. Repeat. And this is also the time you wanna remove any thread. So if you have a white piece and you have a dark thread that's showing, you wanna pull that thread out really quick before um, you spray base, because once you do that, you'll never be able to go back. Okay, and just smooth this back. This is also where I would make sure my seams are nice and smooth and straight. 
Okay, everything's down. So now all you're gonna do is remove the tape from your backing. Sometimes you'll get some thread, um, loose thread. So I just cut those as I go. Okay. And then I to remove the top part. Oh, that came off pretty easy. Look at that. So once you have all of your layers done together, now comes the fun part of actually drawing out your quilting design. Now, because I love straight um, line quilting, this is probably the best method for that. If you wanted to do something a little more tricky, like swirls or more intricate, it's probably not the right method for it. But I love this because it gives me really good crisp sewing lines. All you're gonna do is you're gonna take your ruler and determine where you want your lines to go. Do you want them to go up and down? Do you want them to go left to right? Do you want them to go on an angle? It's totally up to you. A lot of times I look at the quilt design itself, like the piecing and the blocks, to help determine where I'm gonna start, especially if I'm doing an angle. But because this is a sample, I think an angle would be really nice. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna take your ruler and you're gonna go from corner to corner and you're just gonna line it up. And if your quilt's a little bit larger, you might have to use two rulers. We're pulling out our masking tape again. We're just gonna pull a little bit of a masking tape Make sure we're good. And I like to start off of the quilt top onto the, onto the backing and the batting. And all you're gonna do is place your masking tape right along the edge of the ruler. And then overlap the masking tape, make sure everything's lined up. And again, we're just placing it along the edge of the ruler there. Ta-da! Now, you're wondering why the masking tape? What are we doing with the masking tape? Well, you're gonna take the masking tape and you're gonna use the masking tape along with the edge of your walking foot as your guide for sewing. And that's gonna really help keep everything nice and straight. But obviously we're not gonna have just two lines on our, our quilt, so we need to add more. And this is where I think it gets a lot of fun because you can really personalize it and make it your own. You can go as wide as you want the lines to be. You can go as tiny as you want the lines to be. Um, it's totally up to you. But I usually like, you know, about a two inch line because what that does is it gives me the chance to come in and out, um, you know, in between each tape section. And again, we're just pulling some masking tape and we're gonna put it off of the quilt top onto the, the backing and the batting. And we're lining it up with the edge of our ruler. And I love using masking tape because it's a little bit more flexible. And so that way if I mess up, I can just um, do it again. Another fun trick you could do with the ruler in this is you could use an, uh, an invisible um, pencil, you know, your fabric pencil or fabric pen um, to do your lines as well. But I like the tape. Okay, now you can see we have two really nice straight lines that we'll be able to use our walking foot to, to machine quilt those. Let's do another one here. The great thing is you can reuse this masking tape at the very end to pick up any lint off of your quilt or excess threads too. All right, and then you'll just repeat and do the other side, um, you know, or you could do it in order. It's, it's totally up to you. Again, you're just using the edge of this masking tape and your ruler to get a nice crisp line so that you can machine stitch. So now we're gonna take our quilt top to our machine. And this machine has a built-in walking foot, but you'll use your walking foot or your dual feed foot for this. You'll change the stitch length um, to whatever stitch length you want. I generally like a 3.5 or a 4. Um, I like a bigger stitch length of my quilt um, when I do my quilting. And I'm just using 50 weight Aurifil thread. And I love a 70-10 or an 80-12 needle. Um, it's totally up to you. And then I'm going to start, and again, here is, uh, here's where it comes in handy to have your batting and your backing be the same size because it gives you a little bit more room to start the quilting. So I like to start off of my 
um, quilt top. And I just use the edge of my walking foot and follow the masking tape. And then stop on once you get off. And there's your first line of quilting, nice and straight. So then I'm gonna come in on the inside of the tape We're just going to follow the edge of the tape with our walking foot. And you don't want to go super fast because super fast, uh, you might pull the fabric too fast and it might get crooked. Okay, so there's our second line, nice and straight. And we're going to come on this side of the masking tape. Again, we're just using the edge of our walking foot with the edge of the masking tape. And there you can see your quilting lines, nice and straight. And they're on the diagonal, so that's kind of a fun, interesting pattern. And then you just keep going until you get the whole quilt top done. Okay, so once you've finished stitching all of your lines, the next step and the final step is really just removing the masking tape. So I like to start in the middle and pull my masking tape away from the middle. And then again, you can reuse this to catch any loose threads off of your quilt or yourself. So much fun and now you can really see the quilt pattern start to show up and you can see how nice and straight your lines are. Last one. Oh my gosh this is so good. And there you have it. Machine quilting on your domestic machine using masking tape and your ruler. I hope you enjoyed this little video. Check out my other video with Fat Quarter Shop on machine binding. It's a lot of fun. You can follow me over at the Tattooed Quilter on Instagram, check out my website, and we'll see you soon.